Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Tell somebody the stone has been rolled away. And that's why I rejoice today. Hallelujah. Matthew chapter 28. Can you go to Matthew chapter 28? And from verse 1 to 10. If Christ did not arise, what would it have been of us today? But he arose. Praise the name of the Lord. He arose. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Matthew chapter 28 from verse 1. We're going to 10. He says, Now after the Sabbath, as the first day of the week began to dawn, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to see the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat on it. He, his countenance was like lightning and his clothes was as white as snow. And the guard shook for fear of him and became like dead men. But the angel answered and said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen. As he said, come see the place where the Lord lay. And go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. And indeed, he is going before you into Galilee. There you will see him. Behold, I have told you. So they went out quickly from the tomb with fear and great joy and ran to bring his disciples the word, his disciples' word. And as they went to tell his disciples, behold, Jesus met them saying, Rejoice. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Rejoice. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. That is your portion. I say rejoice Amen. because the Lord is risen. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Rejoice because the Lord is risen. Rejoice because he has given you freedom. Praise the name of the Lord. He says rejoice. So they came and held him by the feet and worshipped him. And verse 10, he says, Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brethren to go to Galilee, and there they will see me. Praise the name of the Lord. I bring you that message also today, that rejoice. No matter what the situation may be, rejoice. Because Christ has risen. Christ is risen. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. And why has he risen? First of all, your sins are forgiven. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. He has given us the opportunity to what? For, for, I mean, he has brought about grace. Praise the name of the Lord. Our sins are forgiven. By the blood of the Lamb, our sins are forgiven. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. He has given us the power also to live. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. He has given us the power to live. Hallelujah. If we look at Philippians chapter 4 verse 13, he says, I can do all things through what? To Christ Jesus. If he, if he didn't arise, <laughs> praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. What would be our portion today? But Paul says, what I can do what all things through what? Christ Jesus. Why? Because he arose. Praise the name of the Lord. There's plenty of mercy. There's plenty of grace. Grace is in abundance. Mercy is in abundance. Because why? He has risen. Praise the name of the Lord. And then the, finally I have hope of what? Eternal life. Eternal life. Praise the name of the Lord. Why? Because what? The Lord is risen. Praise the name of the Lord. I have that hope of what? Eternal life. I have that hope of meeting my father at the end of, of my days. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. And to fellowship with him was in eternity. Praise the name of the Lord. 
Hallelujah. So rejoice today because he's risen. There's so much you can rejoice about. Your sins are forgiven. You have hope. You have life. Praise the name of the Lord. And the Lord is, the grace of the Lord is in abundance for you. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. We're just going to call on our dear mommy, hallelujah, to minister to us to, today. Praise the name of the Lord. And I know you'll be blessed as the, uh, the word of the Lord comes. Praise the name of the Lord. Shall we just put our hands together for our dear mommy as she comes, hallelujah, to minister to us this morning. Hallelujah. God bless you. Hallelujah. Amen. Glorious God. Amen. Are you happy to be in God's presence? Yes. If you're happy and you know it's shout, hallelujah! hallelujah! Yes, only the camp of the righteous are shouting hallelujah, hallelujah. at this season. Amen. Because God is good. Let's worship. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, just feel his presence here. Surely. The presence of the Lord is in this place. I can feel your mighty power and your Lord. I can hear the choir of angels sing. I say glory to your name. Oh, surely. The presence of the Lord is in the place. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. I can feel your mighty power and your Lord. I can hear the choir of angels say, I say glory to your name. Oh, show me the presence of the Lord. Oh! 
Everybody will worship you. <laughs> you that existed before the world began will worship you. You that made the stars will worship you. You that made the seas will worship you. You that made the mountains will worship you. You that created the whole world will worship you. Hey, you that started again after the world. You that finished the whole world and started again with Noah, we worship you. You that did the mighty work in the life of Jesus, we worship you. You are still the same God. Nobody created you and nobody can create you. After you, there is no God. Before you, there was no God. And after you, there will be no God. We worship you. We lead on God Almighty in humility. And we say thank you for making us know you. For making us know a little bit about you. Lord, we come again in your presence. I know there are all angels here. Oh yes, I can see the angels uh, that you have already released uh, in our midst uh, to minister to us uh, as of salvation. To minister to us as we are here. The way you send them continuously to Jesus when he was here. You are sending them continuously to us uh, when we are here. So help us until we see your face and bow down on your feet. We praise you, God. Do what no man can do again. Talk to us the, the way the Father talks to the children. Holy Spirit, take control and bless each and every one of us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. You may be seated in God's presence. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Can we take a read on Hebrews chapter 11, please? It's good to have all the handsome faces, beautiful faces, the boys, the girls, the fathers, the moms, the pastors, the, the evangelists, the ministers, hallelujah, the apostles. I celebrate you all. And the Lord celebrates each and every one of us. Amen. You are all blessed. These days are days of blessing because it's only God that has sustained all of us by His Spirit and by His power. Hebrews chapter 11, please. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Hebrews 11. Okay, we can all read together. We are reading the whole of Hebrews 11. Please, I want you to read so that you can, can enter into your spirit now. Let's read together. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Take it. He had the testimony that he pleased God. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is the rewarder of those who diligently seek him. By faith, Noah, being divinely warned of things not yet seen, moved with godly fear, prepared and act, for the saving of his household, by which he condemned the world and became the head of the righteousness which is in accordance with faith. By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to the place which he was received as an inheritance. And he went out, not knowing where he was going. By faith, he dwelt in the land of the promise, as in a foreign country, dwelling in tents with Isaac and Jacob, their head, with whom is him of the same promise. For he waited for the city, which has foundations, whose builder and maker is God. <laughs> By faith, Sarah, herself also received strength to conceive seed and she bare a child she was past age because she judged him faithful who has promised therefore from one man and him as good as dead were born as many as the stars of the skies in multitude innumerable as the stars which is by the seashore these all died in faith, not having received the promise, 
But having seen them afar off, we are assured of them, embrace them, and confess that they were strangers and pilgrims on earth. On the earth. For those who say such things declare plainly that they seek a homeland. <laughs> And truly, if they had called to mind that country from which they had come out, they would have opportunity to return. But now, they desire a better, that is, a heavenly country. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared a city for them. By saying, Abraham, when he was tested, offered up Isaac, and he who had received the promises offered up his only begotten son, of whom it was said, in Isaac your seed shall be called. Concluding that God was able to raise him up, even from the dead, from which he also received him in a figurative sense. By faith, Isaac blessed a Jacob and Esau concerning things to come. By faith, Jacob, when he was dying, blessed each of his sons of Jacob and worship, kneeling on the top of his car. Start. By faith, Joseph, when he was dying, made mention of the departure of the children of Israel and gave instruction concerning his bones. By faith, when he was born, was hidden three months by his parents because they saw he was a beautiful child and they were not afraid of the king's command. By faith, Moses, when he became of age, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the passing pleasures of sins. Esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt, for he looked to the reward. Hallelujah! By faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endures as seeing him who is invisible. By faith he kept the Passover and the sprinkling of the blood, lest he would destroy the firstborn should touch them. By faith they passed through the Red Sea as by dry land, whereas the Egyptians attempted to do so by drowned. By faith the walls of Jericho fell down after they were in circle for seven days. By faith, the hell of Rahab did not perish with those who did not believe when she had received the spies with peace. And what more shall I say? For time will fail me to tell you of Gideon and Barak and Samson and Jephthah also of David and Samuel and the prophets who through faith subdued kingdoms, worked righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouth of lions, quenched the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, out of weakness we are made strong, became valiant in battle, Turn flat the armies of the aliens. Women received their dead raised to life again, and others were tortured, not accepting deliverance, that they might obtain a better resurrection. Still others had trials of mockings and scourges, yes, and of chain and imprisonment. They were stoned, they were sunk into two, were tempted, were slain with a sword, they wandered about in sheep skin and goat skin, 
Big day city, afflicted and tormented. Of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in desert and mountains, in dens and caves of the earth. And all these, having obtained a good testimony through faith, did not receive the promise. God having provided something better for us, that they should not be made perfect apart from us. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Brethren, this is a time when you have to be looking for a better promise, a better result. Hallelujah. It's not a time, you see, when you, when you go down there, you go and search yourself in uh, verse 33 and verse uh, 34. Have you shot the mouth of lions? What have you done? These are Christians like us. Can you give us verse 33 and verse 34? You know, they, the world was not worthy of them. But they were still looking for things. God did not allow them. You see, the promise is not complete until you and I, because of us. Our names will enter there into Hebrew 11. Has, that chapter has not finished. So, when it comes to it, you have to know. You have to know what you are looking for. You know. Have, have you subdued uh, re, uh, 33, verse 33, please? You know. Through faith, you subdue kingdoms. How many kingdoms have you subdued? Kingdom of alcoholism, kingdom of um, uh, uh, adultery, kingdom. Which kingdom have you subdued? You have to subdue kingdom. You have to subdue kingdom of addiction, kingdom of promiscuity. You have to subdue kingdom. If they subdue kingdom, we are expected to subdue kingdom. You don't let kingdom subdue you. You subdue kingdom through faith. What what righteousness? Have you walked righteousness? David, uh, uh, Joseph will be tell, to tell you that, oh, you, you don't, I, I was living here on earth as well. Potiphar's wife, she tried to uh, uh, make me to commit sin. And I said, no, you have to walk righteousness. If this is individual now, you know, forget about foundation ministry, forget about the, you, you, this, these people, they are all individual. When you read the account of Hebrews 11, it's talking about individuals. But one, one person is not talking about church, you know. So, for you to begin to live as an individual now, become conscious of the impact you're making in this world is very important because you alone can subdue kingdom. Mary Celeste, when she was here, she subdued the kingdom of killing twins. Is that correct? Yes, she's only one woman. She subdued the kingdom of killing twins. It's not so uh, we will be having twins today. So it's not a thing of old. It's still happening today. M Mama Teresa, Madam Teresa, through her, many poor people were rich, isn't it? Yeah. She subdued the kingdom. So which kingdom are you subduing? They don't have two heads. They have one head like you and I. So you must pick a kingdom that you see that I have to do something. Your name has to be recorded that you subdue the kingdom. You also want righteousness. You obtain promise. Which promise have you obtained? Hallelujah. Which mouth of lion have you stopped? The same power inside of them is in you. Even greater power is inside of you. Because the power that rose Jesus from the dead is what is inside of you. It's what is inside of you. That's why the Bible says they were not mindful of this earth. Because they were looking for what a city who builder and maker is God. I don't know what you're looking for. Are you looking for a city who build? They are looking for better resurrection. You live a life in such a way, you know. I, 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 I you know, I, you just need to t talk to somebody, and you know where their mind is, and you know what they're looking for. Hallelujah! Stop the mouth of life. Verse thirty-four. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Quench the violence of fire. Those three Hebrew children, they were in the fire. fire. They said, we are not care, king. There are some of us, if they present fire for us, we just say, ah, please, oh, I, I, I don't believe in Jesus again. I want to, yeah, I, I don't want to die. But those three Hebrew children said, 
Pure on CD5. He will live. If they live, God does not deliver us. That's okay. And when they treat them in the fire, they preach what? In violence of fire. God appeared. God can never let you down. You know? You see, when you don't, why you, you are not standing strong for God is you, you don't understand that God cannot let you down. If you understand that God cannot let you down, then you will, you know, stand for him anytime, any day. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. They escape the edge of sword. In witness, you are made strong. You are valid. You know, the woman, the woman, the, the, the child died. The child died. Others oh, are crying. He, she didn't cry. She said, it is well. You have to receive your death back to life. Praise the Lord. That is the kind of faith. And if you look at it, he said, true faith. You tell me you have faith? I want to see what your faith is doing. Hallelujah. You tell me you're born again. And you have, you believe in the Lord Jesus. I want to see what your faith is producing. Because faith without what is what? Dead. Faith without God is dead. Praise the Lord. Today, the Lord just said I should teach us a little on prophesy. Prophesy. Hallelujah. Prophesy. Come to your neighbor and say, neighbor. neighbor. Learn to prophesy. Hallelujah. Amen. Learn to prophesy. You see, prophecy, when we talk about prophecy, we are not talking about prophets. We are not talking about soothsaying. That is going around. People, you know, saying what is not. We are not talking about soothsaying. We are not talking about people who are cajoling God. No, that's not what we are talking about. Praise the Lord. That is not what we are talking about when we talk about prophesying. We are going to be talking about what God expects us to be doing. Let's read First, Chron uh, first um, Corinthians chapter 14, please. It is meant out to be. It's time. It's time. 
time that we begin to have a kind of lifestyle of leaning towards God. Leaning towards God to hear His voice, to hear His word. If you don't hear the word of God in this perilous time, you are going to go astray. Like when we read in, uh, in, 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 in uh, 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 Revelation chapter 12 today, what is Satan doing? He's deceiving. He's deceiving the whole world. And why is he deceiving them? Through what they are hearing. What they are hearing. The intercessors, the, the, you know, they are praying today, you know, about religiosity. What you are hearing, what you are hearing affects you a lot. What you are hearing, the doctrine you have been fed, you know, what you have been bruised with, affects you. That's why people can hardly hear from God. Because they are saturated with what they have heard from man. What they have heard from, from the world. And hearing from God becomes difficult. But God will help us to hear from him. In the name of Jesus. Amen. So today we are going to be looking at prophesying to change our world. We are going to prophesy. We are going to move to the reign of prophecy. For our world to change. And when you begin to do that, you will see struggle ceases in your life. Because you will be doing. You see, if Noah didn't hear from God, would he have obeyed? No. You can imagine in the whole world, only one man heard from God. Only one man. Noah, only him heard from God. And because he heard from God, he obeyed. And when he obeyed, the things he has obeyed came to pass. May you hear from God today. May we all begin to hear from God in the name of Jesus. Because when you hear from God, no matter what your situation is saying, it will not move you. Because what God says comes to pass. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. The Lord says don't remain in the same spot. It's time to move forward. It's time to move forward. Every time there was problem in the Old Testament, I told them to speak. The worst situation change when you speak. Be like God speak. This is what God was saying to me. Change your word through prophecy. Prophesi prophesying means saying things that will happen in the future. When you see, when you when you have seen our past, we have seen our past already, but we have not seen our future. Is that correct? Yes. We have seen our past already. So there is no need of talking about our past. We have seen it already. You know, and uh, what has helped, what have helped so many people is because they live in the realm of the past. You have seen your past already. So what, what, why do you want to talk about it? But you have not seen your future. So you have the power to create your future with what you say. You have not, you have seen your past, that's okay. But your, your future you have not seen. But what you say is what is going to create your future. And today the Lord will help us. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. So we have seen our past already, but we have not seen our future. So we have the power to create a new future for us and our families and our children. Hallelujah. Raise your hand if you have something that you think needs change in your life. Is there anybody that needs anything to change in their life? <laughs> Is there, is, eh? Everyone needs change. Are, are we sure? Is there any one of us that would like to see changes in their lives, in their family, in their children, in their father, in their mother? Is there anyone? Yeah. Hallelujah. Okay. Praise the Lord. So, would you write down those things you need to change? Because those are the things you are going to be speaking to today. Write down those things you would like to change. Even in our world, even in our churches, even in our families, even in our children's life, all those things you need to change on, it is time. Just write them down. Hallelujah. Because the Lord is going to bring about the change. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. So write down what you would like to see change in your life, in your children's life, in your husband's life, in your father's life, in your everyone in this world. In a, in a, don't talk about it, speak about it. 
We need to have a change. And the Lord is going to bring about the change. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. The Lord is good. He's a great God. Amen. You see, prophesying had to do with speaking. You speak the future into existence. You speak the future into existence. Our future is going to change. Our lives is going to change. And I know that none of us is going to be the same. Let me show you something. In Job chapter 22, verse 29, it says, When men say there's a casting down, then that shall say what? There's a lifting up. So, men are saying there's a casting down. So they are talking about now what they are seeing. But you prophesy into the future. You say what? There is what? A lifting up. When they say, when they cast you down and you say exaltation will come. Hallelujah. What will you say? Exaltation will come. Then your heart will be saved. Hallelujah. When they say, you see, you don't say what they are saying. You don't say what they are saying. You don't join the world to say what they are saying. You prophesy. That's why the, 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 the Bible says, I wish you all prophesy. Prophesy, speak into the future. Speak into your future. Speak, change the future. Change what is going to happen. Don't say, oh, I'm cast down. Say, I'm exalted. Hallelujah. Say, I'm exalted. Somebody say, I'm exalted. I'm Hallelujah. That's how to do it. You prophesy into your future. What you want to see in the future, you start speaking it now. You don't speak about your downcastness. You don't speak about where you are. You speak about what you want to see. When God came and there was darkness all over the world, what did God say? He didn't start talking about darkness. What did he say? Let there be what? Light. He spoke into the future. Let there be light. And there was what? Light. He didn't spend time talking about the darkness. He began changing the world. Hallelujah. Our world is going to change in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. In Mark chapter 11, Mark chapter 11, verse 22 and 23. Mark chapter 11, 22 and 23. Our world is going to change because we will be prophesying people. When you wake up in the morning, don't just say, I am tired. Say, I am strong. Don't just say, oh, what a, what a, what a, a, a bad day. Say, what a good day. Hallelujah. Create what you want that day to be. And as you speak it, so shall it be. We do not walk by sight, we walk by faith. That's why I took time for us to read the book of Hebrews chapter 11. So that we know what it means to walk by faith. This is the realm, this is the realm every born again Christian has to walk in. The realm of faith. We don't walk by sight. We walk by faith. And faith calls those things that be not as though they are. You have to change your world. You have to change your situation. And God is ready to do that. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. And in Mark chapter 11, 22 to 23, he said, truly. So Jesus answered and said to them, have faith in God. Hallelujah. I read my own. He said, truly I say unto you, whosoever say to this mountain, be taken up and be thrown into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believe that what he says will come to pass, it shall be done for him. For as surely I say unto you, whosoever say to this mountain, be removed. What do you say to your mountains? You tell them, be removed. You don't talk about your mountains. You don't cry over your mountains. You speak to your mountains. You don't cry over your problems. You don't cry over things. You wouldn't be. God told me something. He said you will have never, you will never be like um, some 137 people who say by the rivers of Babylon, there we sat down and there we wait. That should not be your portion. You don't sit down at the rivers of Babylon and begin to cry and wait. No, you speak to your mountain. Say be removed, be cast into the sea and don't doubt in your heart. It will be yours. It will be yours. 
our families with the power of prophecy. What is in your world? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Let's read Haggai. Haggai chapter 3. Sorry, Haggai 2. Haggai 2. Thank you, Jesus. You are able, more than able, to accomplish what consigns us today. You are able, more than able, you can handle anything that comes my way. You are able, more than able, to do much more than I could ever dream. You are able, more than able, to make me what you want me to be. In Haggai chapter 2, verse from verse 3, it says, Who of you is left? Who of you is left? Who saw this house in its former glory? Who of you, who is left among you? Who saw this temple in its former glory? God was asking. And how do you see it now? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In comparison with it, is it not in your eyes as what? Nothing? Is that correct? Hallelujah. Amen. It looks as if it's nothing, isn't it? Yes. Okay. Now continue, verse 4. Yes, now be strong, Zerubbabel, says the Lord. And be strong. I'm speaking to all of us. Hallelujah. Joshua, son of Zodiac, the high priest. And be strong, all ye people of the land, says the Lord. And walk, and walk, hallelujah, for I am with you, says the Lord of hosts. Continue. According, to, you have to reach to verse 9, hallelujah. For thus says the Lord of hosts, once more, it is a little while. I will shake heavens and earth. Is God shaking? Yes. Are, you, are you seeing you shaking? Yes. Uh -huh. I will shake the heavens and the earth. And the sea and the dry land. Is God doing the shaking? Yeah. Don't ask apostles. Don't ask any man. Is God doing his shaking? Hallelujah. Yeah. Praise the Lord. And you ask God. Ask God about any shaking you are experiencing. Is God doing the shaking? Not man doing the shaking. Hallelujah. Amen. And I will shake all nations. Is it only one nation is shaking? No. no. He's shaking what? Uh -huh. The whole nation. There is no nation on the face of this earth that say they are not experiencing any shaking. Everywhere there is shaking, and they shall come to the desire of all nations. And I will fill this temple, hallelujah, with glory, saith the Lord. In the days of shaking, God is doing what? Filling with glory, hallelujah, Amen. praise the Lord. Hallelujah. In the days of shaking, God is filling your, you with glory. That is a portion you should be looking at. Don't look at the shaking, look at the glory. In the time he's shaking, what is he doing? He's still filling with glory. So he's waiting for you, he's waiting for me to, to carry the glory. Don't concentrate on the shaking. Let's continue. Say the Lord of hosts. Verse 8. The silver is mine and the gold is mine, says the Lord of hosts. Human beings, everybody is it. Verse 9. The glory of this latter temple shall be greater than the former. Hallelujah. Amen. The glory of this, your future is greater than where you are today. Praise the Lord. The glory of this latter house, of this, shall be greater than the former, says the Lord of hosts. And in this place, I will give peace, says the Lord of hosts. Don't your name of the neighbor. neighbor. Your glory. Your glory. In future. Is greater than what you're seeing now. You're greater than what you're seeing now. You're greater than what you're seeing now. You're prophesying now. Remember, God said, without you all prophesy. 
Please prophesy to somebody say, you're greater than what you're seeing now. You're greater than what you're seeing now. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Because thus says the Lord. When God says a thing, he doesn't lie. It comes to pass. Thus says the Lord. The glory of the latter is going to be greater than the former. The glory of foundation is to worldwide. Hope you last one night. This latter time is going to be greater than the former because God is filling us with greater glory. Somebody say, I'm ready, Lord. Yeah, ready. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So, when you face any situation, prophesy. Prophesy. In your shakings, prophesy. In your fire, prophesy. And as you prophesy, it begins to happen. Praise the Lord. None of the word of God will ever come back to it. What is happening to the world? There is famine. There is so much famine. Let us read 2 Kings chapter 6 from verse 24. 2 Kings 6, 24. Second Kings. I read from mine. It says, some time later, Behadeh, the king of Aram, mobilized his entire army and marched up and laid siege of Samaria. There was a great famine in the city. The siege lasted so long that a donkey's head sold for 80 shekels of silver and a quarter of a cup of seed pump for 5 shekels. Verse 26. As the king of Israel was passing by on the wall, a woman cried to him, Help me, O oh, my lord the king. Verse 27. The king replied, If the Lord does not help you, <laughs> how can I get help for you? Hallelujah. Our help comes from God. Hallelujah. And then he kept saying, From the threshing floor, is it from the threshing floor or from the wine press? Verse 28. Then he asked her, What is the matter? She answered, This woman said to me, Give up your son, so we may eat him today, and tomorrow we will eat my own son. So the family have not even, have, has people started eating their children? No. No, in those days, the kind of family they had, people were eating their own children. You can imagine. They were eating their own children. So a mother and the, another woman, they say, okay, today we are going to eat their own son. And then your own is for tomorrow. They, and she agreed. Foolish woman. She agreed and gave her own son to eat. Hallelujah. Who will give their own child to be eaten? If you you rather be hungry or you tell them to eat you first before you, your, your own child. Praise the Lord. And then this is what was happening. It shows you the height of famine. There is famine in the land today. There are so many people who are hungry. So many people. Corona, many people have lost their jobs. There is so much that is happening across the world, not just in Ireland, everywhere. Not to talk of Africa. You see that when I come and family, they, they, you know, food is very difficult. You might even have the money, but you can't find the food to for to buy. It's it's famine across the world, across the nation. <laughs> but prophecy will see us through. Amen. Praise the Lord. So he said in verse twenty nine. So we cooked. My son and eating. The next day I said to her, Give up your son so that we may eat him. But she hid his son. Hallelujah. When the king was thirty, when the king had the woman's word, he tore his robe as went and he went along the wall. The people looked and they saw that under his robe he had sackcloth on his body. Verse 31. He said, May God deal with me. But even be it even so severely, if the head of Elijah, son of a shepherd, remains on his shoulder today. Now Elijah, verse 32, now Elisha was sitting in his house, and the elders were sitting with him. The king sent a message ahead, but before he arrived, Elijah said to the elders, do you see how this murderer is sending someone to cut off my head? Look, when the messengers come, Shut the door and hold it short. Hallelujah. Ish. 
It's not the sound of his master's step behind him, verse 33. While he was still talking to him, the messenger came down to him. The king said, this disaster is from the Lord. Why should I wait for the Lord any longer? Hallelujah. Why should I wait for the Lord? This is the stage. The stage of the problem at that time. And look at what Elisha did. In the days of famine, look at what he did. The kind of height of famine, when everybody was eating their children, the man of God did not cry. He did not begin to say something, but he prophesied. Hallelujah. In, in 2 Kings chapter 7, verse 1, he says, Elisha replied, Hear the word of the Lord. This is what the Lord says. About this time tomorrow, he has no time to talk about the, what is already happening. He said, about this time tomorrow, we need people, we need children, we need men who will be speaking. About this time tomorrow, you speak into the future. Don't confess what is happening. Recreate the future. God has given us the power, the voice we have, the prophecy in our mouth is enough to change our world. By this time tomorrow, he said it. By this time tomorrow, a seal of fine flour shall be sold for a shekel, and two seals of barley for what a shekel at the gate of what Samaria. He prophesied. He prophesied that there will be food. There will be plenty. There will be food. There will be plenty. Prophesy to that situation. Speak to that situation. Don't give, don't say, oh, look at he is down or he is down. No, prophesy. You are up. You are rising. You are increasing. You are multiplying. Change our world through our prophecy. And that came to pass. You know, the man of God, the, the servant was there. He said, how can this be? How can this be? And he said, he prophesied again to him and said, you will see this happen. But you are not going to receive it. You are going to see it happen, but you are not going to have it. Praise the Lord. So it's important that when, when the prophecy is going ahead, you must receive the prophecy. You must receive the prophecy. Praise the Lord. Don't look down on the prophecy because the prophecy is going to come to pass. Hallelujah. Second Kings chapter 7 verse 1. Verse 1 and 2. Let me read the outcome of the prophecy. The outcome of the prophecy is in Second Kings chapter 7 verse 16. 2 Kings chapter 7, verse 16. So then the people went out and plundered at the camp of the at the camp of the Amorites. So a seal of the fine flour was sold for a shekel, and two seals of the barley sold for a shekel, as the Lord has said. Everything God says come to pass. Everything God says come to pass. Everything God says come to pass. Continue to see what God is saying, it will come to pass. It doesn't matter how long it takes, it will come to pass. Touch your neighbor, he said it will come to pass. It will come to pass. It will come to pass. Hallelujah. It will come to pass. It will come to pass. I just want us to spend time to prophesy. That's why I'll just read another scripture and then we'll begin to prophesy. Hallelujah. Ezekiel chapter 37. Ezekiel chapter 37. Hallelujah. Ezekiel chapter 37. I believe that someone here is at the age of breakthrough. There will be breakthrough coming your way. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. I believe there is success all over. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Somebody's dream will come true. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Your dream will not be terminated. Amen. Your dream will come true. Amen. I have a feeling and a great assurance in me that somebody is going to rise. Somebody's finances is increasing. In the name of Jesus. There is promotion coming people's way. In the name of Jesus. There is great things. Good health. Miracles. Hallelujah. We need personality. Blessings beyond coming our way. And so shall it be. In the name of Jesus. Ezekiel chapter 27, verse 2. He said, He led me around among them, and I saw a great army, bones on the floor of the valley, and indeed they were very dry. Then asked me, Son of man, can these bones come to life? Hallelujah. And he said to me, Son of man, can these bones live? 
So I answered, oh Lord, you know. Continue. Again, he said to me, prophesy. Hallelujah. What did God say? Prophesy. What am I telling you? Prophesy. Prophesy. Hallelujah. Prophesy to these bones. I say to them, oh dry bones, hear ye the word of the Lord. Your dry situation, your dry life, your dry destiny, whatever it is, the Lord say what? Prophesy. Okay. Hallelujah. Amen. Hey, don't, it doesn't matter how dry it is. God say what? Prophesy. That is the word of God. Leave it in verse 4, please. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And he said unto me, Prophesy. And I'm saying to you today, Prophesy. 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 Prophesy to your children's life. Prophesy to your husband's life. Prophesy to this child. Prophesy to everyone around. Hallelujah. And prophecy is going to give you what you require. Are you ready to prophesy? Yes. Okay, let's start as we begin to prophesy. I want you to begin to prophesy. Prophesy. Change your destiny. God has, I know you have written what you want to prophesy. Huh? Begin to prophesy. Begin to prophesy, begin to prophesy in the name of Jesus. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I stand with God, I prophesy breakthroughs of God Almighty in my life, of God, in the life of my husband, of God, in the life of my sons and my daughters, in the life of every man, every woman, of foundation, which to world life, home builders worldwide, of God of God Almighty, everyone connected to world in destiny. Breakthroughs in this time of God Almighty, oh God of coronavirus, we speak breakthroughs. Jesus, break through, oh God, for finding a cure for oh God the mighty coronavirus. Break through, oh God, in Africa, in Europe, in America, in Australia, in oh God the mighty, all the world. Break through, we speak break through in the name of Jesus. My name can tell her in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, I prophesy, oh God, success, oh God, to every failure in the name of Jesus Christ. Every failed business begin to be successful. Every failed marriage begin to be first successful. Every failed academician begin to be successful. Every failed life begin to be successful. Every failed ministry begin to be successful. Every failed destiny begin to be successful in the name of Jesus. I prophesy of God's success in the name of Jesus to our world in the name of Jesus to the teacher of the college in the name of Jesus to those in authority. I speak success, successful tenor in the name of Jesus for the Turkish and the teacher in the name of Jesus, successful tenor for all of them. Move forward. 
name of Jesus. I decree and I declare that it shall be well with her. No sickness, no disease. In the name of Jesus, strengthen her on every side. As she waits upon you, continue to strengthen her. Continue, Lord Father, Lord Almighty, to give her more grace and more anointing. Refresh her daily by the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. We give you praise and we honor you. We cover her with the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus will act as a shield for her in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father, and we give you all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you for that wonderful message. Hallelujah. What have we learned today? That we should what? Prophesy. prophesy. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. That we should prophesy. Very, very important that we should prophesy. The Bible says what? That the life and death what is in the power what? Of the tongue. Life and death is what? In the power of the tongue. So God has given us that power to prophesy. Praise the name of the Lord. And it's left for us to obey. Ezekiel was told, prophesy. And he, he was still asking God, it's only you who know how these bones can, raise, be, uh, can be raised again. And God said, prophesy. Prophesy. Praise the name of the Lord. Speak with the power that you, I have given to your tongue. Praise the name of the Lord. And as he spoke, the Bible says what? A noise began and the bones began to what? come to life. Praise the name of the Lord. Don't doubt the power of your tongue. Praise the name of the Lord. It's given to you for a purpose. It's given to you for a purpose. It says death and life. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. The Bible says, and those who love it, it says, shall eat of the fruit of it. There's a fruit that you are able to produce by the power of your tongue. Praise the name of the Lord. And so shall it be that from today, you will begin to prophesy. Concerning any situation, the Bible says, well, speak to it. Praise the name of the Lord. And it will respond. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. I'm going to just take the uh, uh, communion at this time. Praise the name of the Lord. Father, we thank you, Lord, Father, for the bread. Thank you for the wine. Lord, we bless it. And we ask, oh Lord, that even as we take this wine, as we take this bread, let our words become like the words of Jesus. That as he spoke, Lord God Almighty, miracles happened. As he spoke, wonders happened in the name of Jesus. We thank you because, Lord, even as we take this today, that, Lord, you will it will purify us of every sin in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father, and we bless your name in Jesus' name. Amen.